Thank you, Colin. That was a beautiful song, beautifully sung, and right on message. Our Lenten theme this year is looking for love, and today's focus is looking for the helper. Show of hands. <clears throat> How many of you have ever felt sad? Anxious? Depressed? Afraid? Great way to start a sermon, right? <laughs> when we feel any of these ways, what is our natural inclination? To fix it. To change our state of mind. We do not like being unhappy. And so we look for help. And many times, we look for help in all the wrong places, in all the wrong ways. Because our human nature so does not like to feel bad, we search for quick fixes. And often those quick fixes are temporary, starting the cycle all over again. Now, when I was in my career as a, a training consultant and a college professor, I taught root cause analysis. And one of the rules of root cause analysis is if you don't, if you have a problem, if you don't get all the way down to the root cause, what's really causing that problem, guess what? The problem's gonna come back. You know, we, what we call a quick fix, we call like a Band-Aid. You know, put a Band-Aid on it, it's not gonna solve the root cause of the problem. So not only will a quick fix not solve the problem for good, if our quick fix solution becomes an addiction to drugs or alcohol or shopping or eating or whatever, then our cure may become worse than the original problem. Is there a better way? Yes, we can turn to God. Here are just a few examples of the promises of God to be our helper from the Bible. In the Old Testament, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From Jesus, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What we just heard, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. <clears throat> From the New Testament letters, I will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Do not worry about anything, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Our psalm today <clears throat> is also a beautiful example of this. I lift my eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. It comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Wait a minute, you might say. The Lord will keep me from all evil? What about that time when... Well, you fill in the blank. I think that psalm means that the Lord will keep your soul, our souls, from all evil and will also sustain us through our bad times. Why do I say that? 
Well, let's look at the passage that David read from the Gospel of John. When Jesus was talking to Nicodemus about the need to be born again, he says, No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. So yes, on earth, flesh, there is evil. There are hardships and heartaches, but in the kingdom of heaven, all that has been overcome. Jesus also says in the New Testament, in this world you will face tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. When we accept Jesus in our hearts, the Holy Spirit enters our hearts and our lives and helps us to overcome and get through the challenges that we face in this earthly life. God is our helper. So this Lent, I would suggest that you make an intentional effort to go to God when you have a problem or a challenge, rather than relying on more common earthly quick fixes. God is our helper, but God calls us to be helpers too. This is one of the biggest benefits of being a part of a church family. Look around you. This is a whole room full of helpers. In Ecclesiastes, it says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift the other up. That means when I'm down, you can lift me up. When you are down, it's my turn to lift you up. And in lifting each other up, and by the way, we are also called to do this outside the four walls of this building, we are bringing the kingdom of God here on earth. Or in other words, we're helping to create a little bit of heaven on earth. Sometimes being a helper comes naturally, especially to those when we're helping someone we love. Other times, it's a choice, sometimes a difficult choice. Maybe this Lent, we should take stock of where we are in our calling to be helpers. Maybe we need to ask some questions. And here I'm paraphrasing a writing by Benedictine sister Joan Chittister. Some of you may have heard of her. Now is the time to ask ourselves, what kind of person have we be, been becoming all these years? And do we like that person? Did we become more honest, more decent, more caring, more merciful? And if not, what must we be doing now about that? In Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, it says, Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God is among you among us. It's already here. Brian McLaren puts it this way, the realm of God is right here, right now, in the present tense. The relationship with God's love that sets us free is in our midst. We have to have the humility and trust to turn around and see it. Jesus forms a movement of people who trust him and believe his message. They believe that they don't have to wait for this or that to happen, but rather that they can begin living in a new and better way right now. A way of life Jesus conveys by the pregnant phrase, kingdom of God. Life for them, for us, now is about an interactive relationship. Reconciled to God, reconciled to one another. So they will see their entire lives as an opportunity to make the beautiful music of God's kingdom so that more and more people will be drawn into it and so that the world will be changed 
by their growing influence. So maybe this Lent we should give up believing that heaven is a destination in the future. That too, but not just that. Maybe we should accept that the kingdom of heaven is right here, right now. Maybe we should, maybe we should also add in acting in such a way that helps the kingdom of heaven to grow and flourish here and now. In the words of John Wesley, let us do all the good we can, by all the means we can, in all the ways we can, in all the places we can, at all the times we can, to all the people we can, as long as ever we can. Will we rid the world of all evil? Of course not. But with God as our helper, we too can be helpers, and we can make a difference, a positive change for good, a real manifestation of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Will you join me in being God's helper in the world. May it be so. Amen.